Sacre Khan is uh, my first encounter with the queens and also the king. A lot of secrets to be um, revealed to you are here in Prakhan. This is the place that started my investigation as to what these two statues are. The first one that really piqued my attention was this one here. So what secret could she hold? Because the first approach, when you come here, it's very dark and you have all this paraphernalia of uh, worshipping somebody, something, some divinity, Apsara, Tevada, uh, we don't know what it is. But that's not the point. The point that was only one question, beginning, what is this? But when you start to look closer to the statue, what struck me is how deep it is. Look at the details that piqued my attention was on her eyebrows. You can see little holes along her eyebrows on both sides. And you can see also another hole on her forehead. If you look closely, it goes all the way down to her cross harness. And then uh, on the headgear, you probably have also uh, little gemstones that are now stolen. And uh, what struck me most again, everything is broken, right? Except for her nose or the cleft chin. She has an oval face and a very striking feature of a particular woman. So that was the beginning. What is this? Who could she be? Is she just a Tevada? Is she just a queen? Or is she just an Apsara? Uh, I was about to uh, embark on uh, the adventure that I thought would last two weeks. And it took four years to finish up. So this is uh, one of the statues that piqued my attention and the other one is right next to her on the other side. Okay, so let's go on the other side. This is on the same wall as the first statue if you uh, draw a line. However, it is blocked by boulders and uh, stone falling from um, above uh, makeshift ceiling. As you can see, the big stone here is uh, about to damage this whole bar relief. And uh, if you come closer to how it is sculpted, it looks almost like a person. You know, almost, almost like uh, somebody that was used to be alive. That was my first impression of this statue. And I say, whoa, what happened here? Because she's just as beautifully carved as the, the one next to the first one that we saw. We can see again the uh, emblems of the same type on the first one and on the second one. The headgear is a crown that is like a lotus shape right here. And now up to um, down to her garland here that goes around her body the same way. Okay, and you have the common cross harness on these two figure. You can see from the belt here, it took time for them to even come close to put the details on her nice dress of big flowers. And again, peculiar ending is the fishtail dress. Also, what's important of the two figures is her body language. The mudra that she forms, actually, you know, when I start doing my research, it is very specific. One is the meaning of compassion. And he is no fear. It's like, don't fear. I'm here, you know, this is just, again, uh, one of the mudra of uh, these king and queen is actually, they gave a lot for the people. So again, same emblems, royal emblems as the first one. So this was the beginning of my research to kind of classify and sort out the queens from the Tevada, from the Apsara as to how to recognize them.